Good morning, Agape. This is Pastor Witt. Good to see you. I guess you can see some things are different this morning. Yes, I'm recording from my home. Uh, this is Thanksgiving weekend. I just want to tell our team, of our media team, our music ministry team, everyone who's involved with our Sunday mornings being in the sanctuary to broadcast live to you. I just want to tell them thank you give them a day off because they have been so diligently committed ever since this pandemic has, uh, has come upon us. They have been there to do whatever was necessary so that we could broadcast live to you. So I just wanted to give them a day off. And of course, that means I'm doing everything myself this morning. So if something messes up, I'll charge it to my head, not to my heart. I also want to say a big thank you to you for being so committed and tuning in, staying apart, staying connected to our, our virtual worship family. Uh, you are my love of life ministry. So thank you for all that you do, for your prayers, for when you come by on uh, the Sunday leading up to first Sunday to pick a communion, your smiles, your greetings, your care. Uh, love you all. Thank you. Continue to pray for each of each member of our family. Agape family, just continue to pray. Uh, thank you for your giving. Uh, you have just been stellar in your commitment to God, not to the church, but to God. And so I pray for blessings upon your life. And so this morning, I just want to share a word, and, and I'm a believer, that it does not matter where the word comes from, whether it's from the pulpit or from my home, the word does not go back void doesn't go out it doesn't come back void it's just as powerful it's just has the same meaning it does the same thing all it takes are willing hearts a willing heart to receive his word and it's a blessing to you so don't i don't want people to get uh, confused about well it's from the home versus the pulpit it's different no it isn't God's word is the same church and so I, I'm going to preach just from a home I think God God has a word for you and if you receive it I believe and I know for a fact not just what I believe but I know that God will bless you with it let's pray eternal God we are so grateful for this time of sharing thank you for what you're going to uh, bring bring forth to us and we pray now that hearts will be open to receive it and once we receive it and once it pierces our souls that we would move to be all that you desire us to be. God, we thank you for what's coming down the road. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, turn with me this morning to the book of Romans. Book of Romans, Romans 8, beginning chapter 8, beginning at verse 28. Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. 
we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors who loved us. Oh, praise God, praise God. I want to share with you from this thought this morning how to conquer your crisis. How to conquer your crisis. Oh, I, I am a believer today. I am a believer today that we can learn how to conquer what we're going through. Undoubtedly, we are in a crisis. This pandemic is a crisis. And not only that, we all have dealt with crisis all through our Christian life. But on top of that, now we're stuck with a crisis. This crisis has made some changes. It has caused some things to change in our daily lives. Some work has been shuttered. Individuals have caught in COVID-19 and, and it's laid them out. They've gone through a struggle like they never had before with an illness. Churches have been shuttered. That we are no longer meeting the way we used to meet because we want to make sure we're safe and, and our members do not become contagious and, and, um, and, and then get so sick that they may pass. So things have changed. Things have changed. Struggling uh, for food. Folks who have never had to struggle for a meal now are struggling. Bills. People who have paid their bills on time. Now money is short because they've been laid off and gotten behind with rent and everything else. They're struggling. It's a crisis. It's a crisis. And crisis can, can mess you up. When you go through some things that you know you cannot control, you don't know how you're going to make it, it can mess you up emotionally, physically, spiritually. Look what Paul, Paul says, so we know that all things, and we know that all things work together. Look what Paul is saying. He said, no matter what it is, God has his hands on it. And it works out for the good if you love God and I've been called according to his purpose. Oh, my brothers and sisters, how do we handle our crisis? How are you handling your crisis? How are you getting through this thing? It's been, it's been since middle of March. We're going through nine months. How have you been handling the crisis in your life? How have you been dealing with this thing? I want to help you because if you really love God, you don't have to wait for this thing to be over before you shout and shout the victory. Oh, no, no. We don't have to wait till there's a vaccine to shout victory. We have victory because we know who Jesus is. Paul here is dealing in this, in this chapter about the believer's security. Paul is saying no matter what we go through as Christians... He says, if God be for us, in verse 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? No matter what vaccine comes out, no matter what uh, this, this, this pandemic is, if God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, that's shouting. That's victory right there. That's victory. Because I am of God, no matter what the state of this world is, I've got victory. And I don't have to wait till the victory is won to shout. I wonder if there's anybody here. You've been going through this pandemic, but your praise has gotten so great. You, your prayer life has gotten so great. Everything about your walk with God has gotten so great simply because you know whose you are. He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Then he goes on down. I think to verse 38, he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, from the love of God? And he goes through everything you can think of, to persecution, to death, to sword, to, for pearl. He's, he mentions everything he can think of that normally could take somebody out. But he said, if it happens, I still won't lose my love for God. Oh, I, I wonder how many of you who have sat in your rooms or sat in your car or just walking and says, no matter what happens, it won't separate me from the love of God. In fact, it'll draw me closer. 
No, no matter how long we cannot meet, it will draw me closer because there's nothing that can separate me from my love for God. If God be for us, who can be against us? So I, I want to share, I want to share this morning three things that I think can help you. In fact, I know they can help you conquer your crisis. Let's, 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 let's admit one thing this morning, brothers and sisters. Everyone, everyone, or everybody endures some crisis. Every one of us either have endured some crisis, either we're coming out of some crisis, or we're getting ready to go through some crisis. Oh yeah, 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 I, I'm, I'm convinced, I'm, I'm convinced of that. All of us will encounter crisis somewhere in our lives. And so I wanna help you this morning conquer your crisis. What, what is it? What is it? What is it that we need, Pastor Witt? Let me share three things here. Here's the first thing about how to conquer your crisis. The first thing is prayer. You, you see, you see, sometimes we have a lack of victory because we have a lack of a good prayer life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me say that again. We lack victory because we lack a good prayer life. I didn't say you didn't pray. I said you don't have a good prayer life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, we lack victory because we lack a good prayer life. Prayer can accomplish a lot of things. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. James 5 and 16 says, confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, see, you got to have a prayer life. You got to have a good prayer life. If you want to make it through some crisis, you want to make it through some struggles, some tribulation in your life, you've got to know how to pray, baby. You've got to know how to pray. Yes, yes, yes. Look, 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 look. You see, you can't shout victory if you don't have any confidence in what you're praying and who you're praying to. Oh yeah, I know there's probably some people out here who've gone through some things and you can tell somebody that the only way I made it through was because I prayed and I believed in my prayer and I called on God. I had a prayer life. Oh yeah, you want to make it through some things? You better have a good prayer life. Oh yeah, yeah, Elijah, Elijah in Old Testament shows us a great illustration of the power of prayer. Elijah Pray that there would be no rain in the land. He prayed and there was no rain for three and a half years. And then he begins to pray that there would be rain and the heavens opened up and rain came. I need some people to understand about having such a powerful prayer life. You need to be able to get to a point in your prayer life that when you call on God, something happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that prayer life that, that, that when you talk to God, you know something getting ready to happen. You need to have that kind of witness that folks know that if so-and-so, sister so-and-so begins to pray, if, if, if brother so-and-so begins to pray, I'm sticking with them because I know when they pray, things happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see you got to have a prayer life. You got to have a, 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 a powerful prayer life. And see, a lot of times when people go through crisis, they don't really have a good prayer life. They may pray every now and then. They may pray because they're, they're, they're struggling, they're in a panic, and they begin to call on God. God, if you do this, I'll never do this again. God, if you just bring me through, I'll never do this again. You can trust me, God, if you, if you just bring me through one more time. So you've got to have a, a constant prayer life. Because when you have a good prayer life, victory is already yours. See, that's why some folks, many of you, have been able to go through this pandemic without losing your mind. That's why many of you have been able to move forward 
You've been through, you're going through the crisis, going through some struggle, but it hasn't hindered your prayer life. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I wish somebody just waved their hand. Just, just wave your hand. Say, Pastor, you sure right here. I know what you're talking about. You, you got to have that prayer life. You got to have a constant prayer life. Prayer, a, a good prayer life is not always calling on God for something, but sometimes it's just thanking God. God, I just wake up this morning and in spite of my situation, God, I just want to give you praise. God, I thank you for another day's journey. God, I give you all the praise. Thank you for the activity of my limbs. Thank you for the food that's in the refrigerator. It may not be much, but God, when I put my hands on it and I pray and give it back to you, God, you multiply it. God, thank you for the little coins that I have because the little coin on top of the little coin makes a lot. And God, when you touch what I'm praying about, God, it works out. I need some people to understand that you need a powerful, powerful, powerful prayer life. Well, yeah, because prayer, Grandmama said prayer changes things. Oh, my God, my God, prayer changes things. I didn't understand that until I got older and began to really work on my walk with Christ that I realized what Grandmama was saying. Oh, prayer changes thing. When, when you get connected into the right relationship, no matter how bad or how rough the crisis are, you begin to pray and know God is going to show up. He may not show when I want him, but he's going to show up right on time. He may not open the door. I think ought to be open, but God is going to open the door if that's best for me. But I've got to know how to have a vital prayer life. Oh, yes, yes. So if you want, you, want to, you want to conquer your crisis, the first thing is you have to have a vital prayer life. All right, here, here's the second thing. Here's the second thing I want to share with you about how to conquer your crisis. Not only do you need to know how to have prayer, you need to know how to have some peace. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. The, it's one thing to be able to pray. But the other thing is, in the midst of your crisis, in the middle of your crisis, how to have peace. Oh, oh, my God, I know that's going to move somebody. Got to have some peace. You see, see, many fail to conquer their, their crisis simply because they lack God's peace. Oh, yeah, you're praying, but you don't have any peace. You're going to sleep at night worrying about Tomorrow, you're worried about how am I going to make it? How are things going to, to come together? Now, I don't, I don't have a problem with being concerned, but now I've got to have enough peace that when I lay down at night, that I can go to sleep and not have my dreams don't become nightmares. Mm, mm, my God, my God. Look what the scripture says. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now, notice what he says. It doesn't say that he'll take it away, the crisis away. It means you're not going to worry about the crisis. Because look, my mind's on him. And if my mind is on him, then I'm at perfect peace because he's got it. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if anybody has come to the point in your life, you say, I'm not going to worry about it any longer. I'm not going to lose any sleep about any longer. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. Look, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on this. Not only that, not only that, but you see, when your mind is on him, I can sleep at night. As long as my mind is on him, he gives me perfect peace, and then you know what? I can sleep at night. I don't toss and turn any longer because why? I'm at peace. I'm at peace. Look, look, he said, my burdens become my blessings because I'm at peace. Now, check that out. Check that out. My burdens. All those things that I'm carrying, all those things that I'm dealing with are no longer burdens, but they're blessings. Because I've got peace. Oh, my agony, I'm going to mess you up with this. My agony becomes my anointing. 
Oh, praise God. My agony becomes my anointing. What the devil meant for bad, God meant it for my good. My agony. Those things that would that wear you out. Those things that drug you down. Those things that were on your back now are under your feet. My agony becomes my anointing. That's why somebody, some people look at you and they can't figure out why are you still smiling? Why do you still have a song? Why do you still lift your mouth when I know what you're going through? It's because I got peace. I got peace. How is it that you don't have a dime but you're walking around looking like a billionaire because I got peace? Oh, my burdens become my blessings. Oh, Everything that was on my back now is under my feet. And I'm walking in victory because I've got peace. I, I, I need somebody to understand. Grandma, you see, when peace like a river flows, that attendeth my soul, you can tell somebody it is well with my soul because I've got peace. Oh, yeah, I got peace. I got peace. You see, you see, you want, you want to conquer, beloved, your, your crisis. You've got to learn how to have peace. Oh, yeah, God's got it. I'm not worried about this. God's in charge of this. I, I know what fools are saying outside of, of, of the family of God. I know they're saying one thing and another, and, and they're losing their mind, and people are losing their mind. But I've got peace. I'm rock steady. I'm rock steady. I'm rock steady. I got peace. I got peace. I can sleep at night. I can sleep at night because I have peace. I want you to know this is a process of handling and conquering your crisis that you know how to have peace. My mind is stayed on him. I'm not listening. I'm not taking in and all this stuff in that's polluting my spirit. I have peace. Oh, I got God. My mind's on. My, my mind, my mind is stuck on Christ. I'm leaning on him. My mind is stayed on him so I can sleep at night. Oh, yeah. You don't want anything but to sleep at night. You need to put your mind on him. You need to have peace. You see, you see, those who, who are in a panic, those who are losing uh, their, their focus simply is, is because they lack God's peace. Do, do you realize, beloved, that when God puts a peace upon you, that you can smile in the midst of a fire? Do, do you realize when you got God's peace, you can lose your job, walk out of there as if you got a promotion? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when your, your food may be short because everybody goes through some crisis, you can you look in the refrigerator and you don't have but a few things, maybe a chicken, and it's and it's been two or three days old because you've been you can sit down there and get you some dumplings, make you some chicken, and and, and sit there and say, Man, what a feast. Because well, I got peace. I know it looks tough and it is tough, but I know God is not gonna leave me out here. So I'm going to bed tonight and I'm not gonna worry about it because tomorrow is a new fresh anointing. My agony becomes my anointing. Every time I go through something, God, God flips that thing. My, my burden become my blessing. My agony becomes my anointing. Somebody said, I went in the valley one day to pray. Now, when you go in the valley to pray, that means you're going through some stuff because you're in the valley. But I'm stuck in the valley. So since I'm in the valley, I might as well pray in the valley. But look what happened. Because I knew how to pray to God, because I understood about the peace of God, my soul got happy and I stayed in the valley, not because I'm in a valley because I know how to conquer the valley. I know how to deal with my crisis. Oh, I need somebody to just begin to pray to God, begin to worship God and begin to understand that I got to put my mind, take my mind off of that stuff and put my mind on Christ. And when I put my mind on Christ, man, baby, I can sleep at night because I have peace. You can't conquer anything when you're not in peace. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have peace. You got to have peace. Here's the third thing I want to share with you this morning. I want to share this last tip with you, how to conquer your crisis. You need prayer. You got to have a good prayer life. You got to have peace. 
And then you've got to have praise. You need some praise in your life. Look, look. Praise, praise. Look, look. Some people, when they go through a crisis, their faces become long. What do you mean, Pastor Long? Woe is me. Oh, my burdens. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm hanging on by the end of the rope. Oh, I don't know how long this is going to be. You hear them crying and singing that old sad song. Their faces. Now, these are Christian people. These are folks who say, I, I'm in church on Sunday and, and I shout and, and we just have to. And let, let me put this tip here. I think that may be one of the problems we're having with churches today. Because everybody's so quick to get in there and, and, and say, we've got to be in the building. We've got to be in the building. Because if I'm not in the building, if we can't get in the church, something's wrong. See, I've learned how to praise him. I don't have to be in the church to praise God. I don't have to be in the church to understand what God is doing. So what happens? A lot of people have long faces. And so what happens? They run back into the building quick because that's that's really a negative ritual. Because people think because you go to church, that makes you a good Christian. Oh, I'm stepping on somebody. So I better leave that one alone this Sunday. He says that that's a negative ritual. Uh, we got to get in the word because if I don't get the word from the church, then it's not the same. And so what happens is when Christians have these long faces because of the trials they go through, because of the negative rituals, they, they, they lack victory. They lack victory. Oh, yeah, they, they don't have any victory because everything is contingent on certain behaviors. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look. If, if, if I... If I were the enemy, if I were the enemy, and I looked at your long faces as Christians, I wouldn't be intimidated at all. Because I already would know because of how they behave and because of the look on their face, they're not all they say they are. So I can attack them and take advantage of them simply because they don't know how to praise God on their own and out of season. Mm, mm, that, that, may be, that may be too 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 hard for some of you to understand. You see, some folks, they, their praise is contingent on where they are and who they are around. And so when things don't go the way they think they ought to, their faces are long. And they go into a depression, a spiritual depression. And the only thing that can get them out is if I can just get it back into the building. And so what happens in pandemics like this, we rush to get people back in because we think that justifies who they are. But what justifies who we are as Christians is if I can praise them where I am. Oh yeah, the enemy is looking and the enemy is sizing us up. And if the enemy says they're always with long faces because they can't get back into the building because the crisis is too hard for them to handle, then those are the ones I'm going to attack and take control of. I need somebody out here to understand I've got to praise you, got to praise on the inside that you cannot contain. I don't have to wait for the victory to already shout, victory is mine. Oh, I gotta have a praise. You see, see, that's how you handle your crisis. You got to learn how to praise your way through. Oh yeah, you gotta praise your way through, beloved. You got to learn how to praise your way through. See, if I've never had a problem, how would I know that God could solve them? If it never rained in my life, and your life, how could we understand how to appreciate the sunshine? Oh, I want you to conquer your crisis starting today. Conquer this crisis. And you, you know what, really, in my heart, I, I, I believe that, that, that our, our church family has learned how to conquer because you're committed. And see, our commitment to Christ is not so much that we have to be in the building at a certain time. It's our personal relationship with him. Oh, how to conquer your crisis. You got to have a good prayer life. 
Your mind has to be on stayed on him so you can have the peace of God in your life. And in the midst of everything, you got to still praise him. You got to have a praise. You have to have a praise. Look, in spite of everything you and I have endured through this pandemic, I still got to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You still been good to me. In the midst of everything that we are experiencing, God, you still making a way out of no way. You're still opening doors that are closed in our faces. And it's simply because we have peace with God and we still understand, God, I'm going to praise you. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to depend on you. I'm still going to have the peace of God. No matter how bad it looks, you're still in control. In control. You still have the last say-so in everything in this nation. And God, I still have praise. Oh, you can't hinder my praise. In fact, the, the, the harder the crisis is, the more I praise him. I didn't understand what the old folks used to sing. Uh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. That's, that's peace. That's peace. That's peace. I'm going to make it. We are. The victory is already ours. We need to start acting like it. We need to start acting like the victory has already been delivered. How to handle your crisis. Oh, I praise God for you. And I, I pray that this word is a blessing to you that it will encourage you to keep your focus on him. To understand it doesn't matter whether we're in the building. I want to be, I want you back in the building. I want you back in the building. But God says, not time. And so you know what? I'm just going to be patient. Oh, my blessings aren't based on the building. My, base, my best blessings are based upon my relationship with God. Just a test. Oh, please stay, stay, stay focused. Stay focused, church family. Maybe there's someone looking, watching this morning. We've had a couple who, uh, just blessings that have become a part of our Agape family through our virtual worship. Wherever you are, uh, Christ wants you to open the door so that he can come in. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in and sup with them, and they'll sup with me. John says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Paul says in Romans, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I want you to have life life. So if you're someone who's been searching for the answer, I want to invite you to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, what, how do I do that? Well, it's acknowledging that you are a sinner and that if you die tonight, you would spend eternity in hell. It's coming to the realization that you cannot make this journey by yourself. You've tried everything. You've tried it your way. You've done it your way. And you realize I'm missing something. Something's not working. And I'm here to encourage you to tell you that what's missing is Jesus Christ in your life. Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, that if I receive him, I receive eternal life, my salvation. Oh, it's very simple. Just acknowledge that. And if you want to become a part of the Agape family, you have our web, web address. Uh, you can text. You can send an email. I will return your email. I will pray with you. We will receive you. If you want to become a part of a different church family, I'll lead you that way. It's about, it's about heaven citizenship. I want you to know that if, if, if Jesus comes back today, I want you to be ready. Oh, I thank God for all of you who are watching. Thank you for your commitment. Oh, gosh, you don't know what it means to me. Thank you for those who have sent uh, prayer requests in uh, through our website, and I've been able to contact you back and uh, just check on you and, and, 
and pray and, and, and encourage you. Our family, the best is yet to come. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. God is still blessing us right now. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful for this time of sharing. We thank you for your word. We need a word. We need a word. Thank you for this word. God, we move on from today encouraged, more encouraged that the victory is already ours. We thank you for, for steps to conquer the crisis. God, we thank you for those who are opening their hearts to receive family uh, citizenship, family uh, connection with the family of God. Thank you. We pray for each and every family that's watching. And God, we pray for our nation. God, you're still speaking. And we're listening. We pray for all leaders. We thank you for our state leaders, our city leaders, our county leadership. God, we just continue to pray for each person that's watching. We pray for special blessings upon their household. God, we honor you. We thank you for everything. Now, may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his contents upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. Let all God's children say amen. Family, I love you. Thank you for your consistently uh, tuning in to the word. And I pray that if you hang on in there, great things are going to happen just for you. Hey, be blessed this week. Be a blessing to someone. God bless you. We'll see you next week. I love you.